Folks, um, I saw a report from CNN. It, it blew my mind. I was um, I was in South Carolina for a wedding this weekend, and so uh, CNN was the only thing available at the hotel. And I saw this report, and it was uh, the the host on the show was like, "We're going to show you images from Yemen of." children starving to death and it's heartbreaking and um etc cetera, etc cetera. and i was like oh good this is good the american public needs to know our role in what's going on there and how devastating it is i mean the un has been warning us now for a couple of months and really i mean this has been going on for for months and months and months but i think there was another report just like uh, less than a couple of weeks ago that said, we are right on the cusp, it may be even too late, to stop one of the greatest humanitarian crises, uh, crises uh, that we've seen in generations in Yemen. And it is because of the Saudi war and blockade basically being waged on Yemen. And they are able to do this for one reason. And that is because we enable them. We enable them with logistic support, logistical support, with armament support. Like we're not even just we're not turning a blind eye to this. We are literally making it possible for them to do this. And so I'm watching this report. And the closest they came. And horrible images of individual children completely starving to death like sitting on a medical table they can't even roll the kid over on his back because of the pain from the malnutrition and they're talking about how heartbreaking this is and the only thing that they the only reference in this like five minute report was at one point they said the Saudi led US backed coalition that was it just those words were the only words that basically would indicate to the American public, oh, incidentally, you have the ability to end this almost immediately. Now, the story was also pegged on Mattis saying that they have 30 days to try and wrap this up. And it was pretty weak tea, particularly when you see uh, this from a uh, Donald Trump uh, as to his regret in selling uh, armaments to the Saudis. Now understand the Obama administration followed the same course. They didn't enable it as much. They did it supposedly in retrospect. And I don't know how you would assess this as supposedly they thought like, oh, constructive engagement. If we're part of this, we can maybe hold them back. And they did supposedly have some shackles on the amount of civilian control. And they thought it would put them in a position to prevent something like this. But it's two years later and the Trump administration just went, uh, just did what the Obama administration did, but uh, with no restraints whatsoever. Here is uh, Donald Trump sitting down with Jonathan Swain and Jim Vandehei for that Axios program. Ugh. Let's talk about foreign policy, big issue. Uh, what do you make of the situation in Yemen right now? I think it's a terrible situation. Uh, I hated seeing what happened with the bus and the children, because that's pure, it's a horror show when you see a thing like that. You saw the bus and... Well, I was going to ask you, because, uh, I mean, I know, you know, you're very proud of the arms deal you did with the Saudis, but that was a U.S.-made bomb no, on that right, bus. No, that's right, but it wasn't operated by U.S. people. That's I know, but, like, it's, it's the Saudis we using that. our weapons, uh, right? Our people are the best operators in the world. But does that bother you when they use an American, like a, a Lockheed bothered. weapon? Jonathan bothers not strong enough. That was basically people that didn't know how to use the weapon, right. which is horrible. Would you ever stop? Selling them arms if this continues, if you keep seeing. I don't want to see that. That is a terrible thing. What's going on in Yemen generally is a terrible thing, and we're going to see. And we're looking at Yemen very carefully right now. We are actually studying Yemen very, very carefully. How it would you is, handle it? It is Saudis? probably right now the worst place on earth. Yeah, UN says say. that. 
the UN oh, says that. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Okay, well, for I say it too. I didn't know the UN said it, but I say it. How would you handle it differently if you were the Saudis? Uh, I, I'll be talking about uh, a lot of things with the Saudis, but certainly I wouldn't be having people that don't know how to use the weapons shooting at buses with children. The Defense Department... Pause says it for it. one second. I mean, this is... If it wasn't so tragic, it would be sort of funny to watch a guy who clearly doesn't know what he's talking about, talking about like, uh, it, it, I mean, look, they know how to use the weapons. Well, I'm going to remind everybody of what they said about that bus bombing, which is our bad. We thought somebody was in there that didn't turn out to be in there. Right. They were not. In other words, not that they we were should, aiming yeah. for the, the bus. Right. They and, just, and we knew kids were there. It's just that the, the target that the kids would have been worth sacrificing for didn't turn out to be in the bus, so our bad. Right. So, so this story of them not knowing how to use the weapons, um, first of all, it's a lie. Second of all, um, if that was the case, then that's exactly why you would use as an excuse, like, we're not going to sell it to you anymore because you don't know how to use them and it's killing civilians. Going to work on the manuals. But, but, but again, understand, he's focusing on this one story because he knows about it. He may or may not know. Apparently, he's not aware that the U.N. said we're on the cusp of a massive, massive humanitarian crisis in terms of, uh, of, of uh, the deaths of tens of thousands of children, more, hundreds of thousands uh, from starvation. But uh, continue. The Defense Department says it does not make tactical targeting decisions, but does improve their targeting quote from Mattis, I will tell you that we do help them plan what we call kind of targeting the Defense Secretary Jensen. And we teach them how to use the equipment, but that doesn't mean... Obviously not good enough. Yeah, I'm not happy about it. I'm not happy about it, but we'll see what happens with Yemen. Um, when Congress, in the last defense bill, they uh, included a clause that required Pompeo, the Secretary of State, to certify that Saudi Arabia and the UAE were doing enough to avoid harming civilians. Now, remember, about a year or two ago, shortly after Trump came in office, he relaxed the rules on attacking civilians in Yemen that we had passed on to the Saudis. So you immediately saw more civilian uh, casualties. So... Pompeo had to provide that certification. Shortly after the, bo the bus bombing, Pompeo provided the certification that said that they were doing enough to reduce the risk of harm to civilians and civilian infrastructure resulting from these military operations of these governments. That is a quote from Pompeo. He also said that ending the war in Yemen was a national security priority and the United States would continue working with the Gulf allies to pursue peace talks. And we could end it like this by simply saying no more weapons we're just not going to sell you the bombs anymore we're not going to refuel you in air either that's another major part of how they're able to do this and there's not a lot of options for them unless they want to re completely retool their entire military they don't have uh, much of a military they have a lot of gadgets from us but yeah exactly they don't to have the, the extent that to they have um jets and fighters i mean um they need us. So we have leverage, in other words. Let's go to the IMs. Calling from Nebraska, TMBS approaching corporatist status with a effing sellout of its live event. <laughs> Doe, how can media continue to say the economy is better and not at the same time report how Trump and family and Republicans are gutting the Treasury? What's a good two sentences that aren't snarky I could use to describe Jordan Peterson to someone who's been reading his stuff but not attached to him? Uh, Mystic Charlatan? That is a little snarky. Oh, sorry. He, it's a little snarky. I thought you asked for the opposite. Not snarky at all. I think you, you could say that he is... Um, Misguided self-help author. Selling misogyny in the guise of, of enhancing young men's self-esteem and has also found it convenient, I think, to attach his uh, ship to sort of soft conservatism in some way. 
that is not well thought out. Jabby, Kegel Queen, how can I be a jester in that court? <laughs> Mitch from Houston, Pelosi ads are all over Texas too. Just tell Trump that Yemen was Obama's idea. John from San Antonio, forgot to mention, if people want to follow my alt Twitter account, it's just John from San Antonio, but first you need to translate it into Sanskrit. Is that true? Uh, Anarchy GTA. We protested Steve Bannon speaking last night in Toronto and the police pepper sprayed us and arrested a bunch of us. Jesus. Patriot Gayer, that sexy, very proud boy, Joey Gibson and his gimp, Tiny, are planning another rally at City Hall in Portland, Oregon with his wide-eyed Jesus freaks on November 17th. Counter-protesters are encouraged to turn out. Retcon, you and Janine were on Morning Joe in 2005. Not um, Morning Joe, it was uh, Scarborough country at that time you were both badasses and my favorite part was when janine called scarborough a propagandist uh, i looked it up in celebration of your show's birthday happy birthday mr you and janine were uh, oh, thank you very much congressional baseball fan as we prepare to enter the off season it's important that we keep the hot stove hot and americans engage with the election tomorrow i feel the slogan blue wave is lost speed please feel free to use the much more engaging bases loaded play ball america <laughs> Attorney Andrew, very happy that Sam finally took my advice to do a dumb, dumb left show as I have been pushing for at least two years. Remember, I am the, an ideas man. I'm also very humble. To Emma's question about Medicare for all, it's a win-win. Let's say your employer pockets the full savings from no longer having to pay for your private insurance directly. Under Bernie's bill, your insurance will be better under Medicare for all because you'll be able to pick your doctor. You will have no deductibles. You will have no co-pays and dental and vision will be covered though it's unlikely for all employers to simultaneously sit on the windfall forever, especially smallish businesses. Yes, but presumably the argument is that she's making is that, yes, my Medicare for all will be cheaper, but what will, what will the money that I paid for, for all those uh, deductibles and co-payments, be relative to the, um, to the taxes that will be increased to pay for that Medicare for all, for that individual. That, that's the question. And um, I mean, it's a legitimate question, but I think there are definitely fixes for it. None of this stuff is, you know, can't know how that employer will react and it's very contextualized. Like I say, if there's two uh, people in that same business or you're, you know, they're going to have to step up because the other person's going to offer that some of that money to their employees. Yeah. They're still going to have to compete in various ways for workers. Right. And like, this is another thing I just thought of. I know not everyone's in a union, but healthcare is such a big part of union negotiations right now. And if that were taken off the table, they could focus more on negotiating salaries and control and stuff like that. Comment.